Hi guys, in 2011 or maybe 2012 I was wandering around a discount bookstore. I came across a book called The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Japanese author Haruki Murakami. I hadn't heard of that writer's work before other than a mention of one time when I was studying a diploma of professional writing and editing at university. There was a lot of creative writing units as part of that course and um, one student who was a kind of I guess, you know, a friend of mine um, while at university, you know, looked at my writing and, and looked at some of the things I was maybe interested in and said, you know, I reckon you'd like this guy and this particular book in question. Now, that had fled my memory um, in the preceding year or so before I ended up in this bookshop. But as I passed that book and saw that title, uh, and my memory is not usually this good, but it, it came back to me, that particular memory of chatting with that colleague at university, it came back to me, and I was like, oh, well, you know, better check it out then, better buy this book. From when I first read the opening page of this book, there, it was just something that just grabbed me, uh, that kind of tantalized me and made me think, oh yeah, I... I may not see where you're going with this, but I'm really interested in the ride and what you're propositioning in many ways. So I thought I might just read the blurb um, from this new edition of the book. Toru Akado's cat has disappeared and his wife is growing more distant every day. Then there are the increasingly explicit telephone calls he has started receiving. As this compelling story unfolds, the tidy suburban realities of Okada's vague and blameless life spent cooking, reading, listening to jazz, an opera and drinking beer at the kitchen table are turned inside out and he embarks on a bizarre journey guided by a succession of characters each with a tale to tell. That is just kind of a glimpse into how this story unfolds and where it takes you. It's very much in the realm of magical realism. There's a lot of fantastical things happen but are treated like everyday occurrences but not in maybe a Gabriel Garcia Marquez kind of sense, like I'm, I'm thinking 100 Years of Solitude type of vibe. They are still grounded in our reality because I, I, it takes place in the early 1980s in t Tokyo, Japan. As you follow this main character through a first person written a narrative um, of Toru and his search initially for his, him and his wife's missing cat and then, uh, and then again for his wife who um, at some point he needs to find out what's going on with her. And there's just transient moments, there's laugh out loud funny moments, there's sexy moments, there's grot grotesque moments. There's one particular chapter I, I quite enjoy where Toru meets this aging um, ex-army veteran from World War II, a Japanese veteran from World War II, who tells this horrifying story of um, meeting these, I believe they're Russians or Cossacks, or, or something, maybe Cossacks weren't from World War II, but they're, they're Russians of some kind. Um, during that part of the conflict and what watching his you know senior officer being skinned alive and then being dumped somewhere in I think it's in Mongolia somewhere if I remember um, and being um, left in this the bottom of this dry well and wells as as many people who know Murakami well <laughs> um, being you know I wouldn't even say trapped but sitting at the bottom of well is, is a symbolism that keeps coming back and again and again into many Murakami books and, and references but um, very much in use here as that idea of being in that almost permanent darkness when you don't have light coming out or even how light plays when it does shine in darkness is very very interesting and I, I sometimes still think that I'm not quite sure what he's trying to say because it's moving beyond the reality of the self and into another realm I would say when he discusses those kind of things and that's kind of what the book can be like it can talk about very mundane things he, he, the main character talks a lot about what he's cooking and how he's cooking it um, and there's very amusing sequences um, involving his interactions with the opposite sex but for those who don't know much about Murakami he was kind of like he finished high school I think maybe studied a little bit in uni but then with his um, partner opened up a uh, jazz bar in Tokyo um, where he ran for ages and then one day I think in his late 20s early 30s he was watching a baseball game in Tokyo and some player hit a ball and in that moment when that happened he just had a thought because he has always been a big fan of reading and, and reading a lot of books 
but he had the you know something came in his mind he said you can you you will write a book or I, I can write a book and then after he went home after that game he went to the stationery shop now this is in the maybe early 80s I would say or, or even late 70s bought a bunch of stationery some pencils and he just started writing and the first novel he wrote Hear the, Hear the Wind Sing he submitted it into a Japanese literary competition um, it's like a first you know for new writers I believe it's called or, or, or something along the lines of that and it was his only copy it was all handwritten back then and he didn't print it up or anything like that didn't keep anything and he just sent it away didn't think of it kept running his jazz bar and then he actually won but I think maybe for the third book he and his wife um, talked it over and said look I reckon with this next book I can make it a best seller in, in Japan at least and um, I reckon I don't need to put everything into it though. I need to, I can't work this full time job, you know, especially running a jazz bar and everything like that. And he, they sold up everything, and they had enough money maybe for like a six months to a year or something like that. I can't quite remember the context now. And he just wrote this third or fourth novel, um, and he already had a publishing deal from his, from his, you know, from that competition he won and from that first couple of um, short novels. And then he, he was right. He, he, that book became a bestseller and then he could then focus full time on writing which is what he's been doing ever since. That idea of favourite books, you know, like with favourite movies, I've, I always find it hard to pick a favourite movie. I have a list of maybe top five but I can never place number one but for some reason The Wind Up Bird Chronicle is something I always like to come back to, something that is comfort for me, something that makes me feel like there's something beyond the reality of the world. I don't mean in a kind of mystical sense, but just that idea of inspiration and, and imagination. I, mean, I feel like that's kind of what this book conjures up in me when I read it. And and obviously the way the characters interact, and even though it's all unrealistic to many respects, I guess like a lot of literature can be. Um, it's quite fun because of that as well. And it's, it's quite an enjoyable, if long read as well. So look, Wonder Bird Chronicle, my favourite book. I hope you guys track it down and read it because it really is something to be experienced. So until next time, see you guys later.